presence here today. We are making this our annual event, of course, and it is an event where we try to connect sacrifice the greatest of all. associated uh, with the grief is also true for those who are still here, those who remember them and honor them. It is for us to deal with the sense of loss we have and add meaning to their sacrifice. And of course, one of the side effects of active duty uh, is, the, is the loss, but it's also sometimes the loss of what's left behind. Perhaps more than ever before, with our great uh, medical technologies and our rapid response, we're able to save many more of the veterans who are the active duty uh, men and women who suffer a grave, grievous injury and still live to come back home. And in more recent times, we've come to understand that other things get left behind, more things that are hidden. One veteran that I knew from the NAM Vets Association had the sense of what it meant to him, what he lost. And he had worked hard, difficult, much difficulty coming to grip with it. Hence, the Man Vets Association often did its own outreach and its own uh, therapy long before people came to the byword for veterans who had gone through uh, difficult times during the war and also when they come back. One veteran by the name of Andrew Isham Boyd, in the 1980s, was having great difficulty dealing with this. In fact, he couldn't even, every time he wrote about his experiences, he had to use a pen name, hence his name of old-fashioned quality, Andrew Isham Boyd. And in Veterans Day 1985, he presented to the community the following poem. And I, I want to thank Tracy for making reference to the poem that she read, What Heroes Gave. A survivor of the Vietnam War, he was still trying to come to grips with what he gave. And he had this to say. I have come to say goodbye to you, my friend. I cannot pretend that you are still with me anymore. You had so wanted to give so much to so many, but the enormity of events engulfed your exposed position of fervent ideals. You went to a war with a noble and resolute assurance that who you were never came back. I never had the chance to express goodbye, as you were so overwhelmed and forsaken. I have felt your infinite sadness. I have absorbed your consuming aloneness. I have felt your raging grief. I need to say goodbye to what was. I need to embrace what now must be. The moment has arrived for a joining of purpose and behavior. Your cares and your cries will not have been in vain. It is essential for me to summon this farewell. It really is time to take up witness to how you embrace life. Therefore, I claim your spirit to the winds and to the waters, to the endless blue of sky and to the good green hills of earth. And yes, I commend it, renewed, and most passionately for myself, for who I was, never came back. You gave me so much. Your yearning, my yearning, remains. 
grant me peace. So it is, I will not forget you, always. I have come to say goodbye to you, my friend, myself. Andrew Isham Boyd was a pen name. The real name of that writer was, and still is, Phil Morris. I am that Phil Morris. It has taken myself, and whatever guise that I use, a while to come to grips with the effects of the war that I participated in and volunteered for. And I appreciate so much those who have given their service because I know they've given more than they can reveal. So it is today that I take up witness for the service of those who have not come back and for those who have not come back in the way we remember. And I join with you in taking up witness for what they gave and what they sacrificed for has been our freedom, our safety, our prosperity, and their love for those we left behind. So I want to thank you for allowing me to connect with you, and I want to thank you for allowing me to connect with everybody in the community in my various ways. So I thank you again for this Memorial Day. Godspeed, and God bless all of us.